Head over to miniaturemarket.com where they have thousands of board games at discounted prices like Carpe Diem. Carpe Diem is a tile laying game where you'll be placing tiles on your own board to create fields for resources or buildings for different abilities. And you'll be gathering these tiles by moving to an adjacent slot and taking one of the tiles and placing it immediately. The game is played over four rounds, and each round you'll be having some scoring to do different goals, like turning in certain resources or having certain buildings built. Get resources by finishing buildings and getting that type of resource. And during scoring, you'll be seeing which two cards to score, like turning in two fish or having these buildings built, and you'll get points if you get them, but you get minus four if you can't do either of them. And the goals and the orientation of them are different each game. But you also have long-term goals, like finishing certain buildings, in line with that goal on your specific board for that game or having many chimneys because they get you plenty of points at the end of the game as well and whoever has the most points at the end of the four rounds is the winner Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Carpe Diem, this version fixes many things in the previous versions. This is a great failed in less than an hour. You're planning all your actions at the beginning of the round, but your plans will get thwarted and you'll need to pivot quite often. It's very tactical. The scaling of the different player counts is amazing in this game. The scoring selections randomized makes every game feel different. Lots of nuances like coins being wild and using bread to for all different reasons. Uh, the goals changing each game, even how they are laid out changes things. Trying to figure out where to lay your tiles, it's very tight. You're fighting with others to try to be the first to get certain bonuses. Plus you have bonuses around your board for long-term strategy that give you some focus but also change each game. This game, for an hour game, is probably one of the most crunchy tile laying games out there. This is my favorite tile laying game for gamers and it is my favorite failed because it's played in under an hour, not too much setup. It's, and it's almost as fun as Castles of Burgundy, in my opinion. But in, on the negative side of things, even though it looks a lot better than previous versions, the graphic design and art isn't still quite up to speed to what other games these days are doing. But Carpe Diem is a fantastic gamer tie lane game, and it got a saxophone serenade. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're gonna to be gathering prestige and building our own tableau in front of us with different types of things like chicken farms and grapes and water and bakeries and things like that. Today we're trying to seize the day in Carpe Diem. This is the newest edition of this. This is, I believe, the third edition. New box, new rules, some new tiles and such. Let me show you how the game's played. This is a Stefan Feld game. I'll see you on the other side. Carpe Diem is a tile laying game that lasts four rounds, and each round you're going to be gathering different tiles and laying them on your board in specific configurations to try to gain resources, which will help you get points. And points are tracked by cards in this game, and each player has a board to track their resources, and it helps them see what all the different abilities in the game do. Now the main part of this game is played out here on the main board where we have goals that are different every game, and we have different tiles that players are going to be trying to gather. On your turn, you're going to take your figure and you're going to move it either left or right from the box that you're in. So let's say we move here, then you'll take any one of these tiles to add to your specific uh, tableau, if you will. So let's say we take this one. Now when building, you'll do this immediately. You start on the shovel and you could orient it in any way you want. And everything else after this has to adjoin to this, not including diagonally. Then it'll be the next player's turn. Maybe they go here and they take this and they place this on their building. Now let's say it was a few turns later and we move here and we take this anytime. Now with a two player game, if there's two tiles left, these come off and they're gone, which means it gives the scaling feeling as if you're playing with four players. It scales for three players as well. But if you play with four players, you play until all of them are gone. Now as the game goes on to future turns, as you place things like these fields, this is closed. This has an edge and this has an edge. Sometimes you'll make them longer. You count the tiles here, there's two, and you take one less than that of that specific resource. So for example, we finished that field, we would get one leaf in that example because there were two tiles, it's always minus one. But you can see if there's a, there's a chicken farm, there's water, and then there's, a, there's vineyards, and you can take the grapes, the fish, or the chickens if you do, if you complete some of those. There's also different buildings that you can complete, and each of these buildings that you complete will do different things as well. Like for example, if we just finished this building here, 
you get to turn in all your resources, in this case we have one, and replace them with coins, and, and you get an additional coin for doing that. And these coins are essentially wild resources, so they're good for anything. You know, if you finish the bakery, you'll get two bread, for example. And we'll show you different ways to use bread. One of the ways is, is you can spend one bread to move your character anywhere. Like here, maybe take this. Now also, if you ever place on one of these spots here, like in this case, we actually finished the, this silver building. Uh, we, since we place on here, we look at this little scroll here, and that silver building alone gets us two of those. That lets us go up this track. In this case, we would have gone up a total of three. Now this is gonna be points at the end of the game, but it's very important also because it's turn order for the next phase of scoring that I'll talk about right about now. Because once there's no more legal moves, all the tiles are gone, you start and go to the scoring phase. Where in this turn order from highest to lowest, you're going to be able to select which two cards you're going to score. For example, everyone has these discs that they'll use. If I put it here, this means I need to turn in two fish and I've at least completed one silver building and one green building. And it's easy to see like some of these have red lines and those ones mean you spend resources. And the green lines just mean you just have to have it done on your board, you don't turn anything in. So if I was able to turn in two fish and or gold, cause gold's wild resources. And if I had at least one of these built, I'd get seven points and I'd get four points. But let's just say I had two fish like this one, I'd get four points, but I wasn't able to do this. Anyone you're not able to do, instead of getting what's here, you just get minus four. So if that was the case, I would have gotten four, minus four, I would have had literally zero extra points in the scoring phase. And some of them, like, hey, if I have three chimneys uh, on my board, I can get certain things. I'd go up on that track and I'd get a bread. So some of them give you actual you know, things as well. But you're only placing one of these per round, which means that as the game goes on, these are gonna fill up so no one can go here again. So if I have, if I wanna score more fish later, I'm gonna have to place it here to, to give in two fish and give a grape, you know, a, a leaf and a chicken to score both of these again. But you're only placing one for each round, but you're gonna end up playing four rounds because once everyone's placed here, you refill this up from the randomized tiles and you play a whole nother round like that again. So you'll play a total of four rounds. Now, another thing to think about is at the end of the game, you're gonna be able to score for certain things. These are always randomized each game. You have like four different frames that fit together like a puzzle. Now this says if you have at least one of these gold buildings that intersect with this imaginary line like we do here, then we'll get four points. Here, if we have one of those uh, chicken fields that at least intersect down here, you'll get five points. And so you have these on each of the lines of your board on each side. And so there's some end game goals that you're shooting for throughout the game because those only get scored at the end. Now also you'll notice we have this, these are the chimneys that I was talking about earlier, but you see these buildings here. And at the end of the game, you'll also count up how many chimneys you have in the completed vias, they call them, those little red black buildings. So you can score a lot of points if you just focus on some of those as well. So again, you're gonna play four rounds. You're gonna be get, gathering points throughout the game at the end of each round for some of those goals that you do or not do, you get minus points. Uh, and then you're gonna score you know, points for your resources divided by two. You're gonna score points for that track I showed you earlier that also does turn order. Uh, we'll look at your vias like that. We'll also look at your frames and you know whoever has the most points at the end is the winner. So let's talk about a few more aspects here. These bottom tiles are uh, you know, randomized here at the beginning of the game. And if you complete one of the green back buildings, you get to take one of these tiles and place it immediately. Also, we talked about bread earlier. If you want to, you can spend three bread. And if like when I was placing here, if I didn't have one of these two buildings, I could spend three bread to not get the minus four points for them. That's the other way to use the bread. There's also some one-off buildings too. This one is a single tile that just gets you one bread from the bakery. This one just gets you a single coin from the market. And this one allows you to take a card from the fountain deck. Now this deck you'll draw two from, you'll keep one, and you get to use these for like end game scoring. Like this would get you two points for every vineyard you have, or two points for every finished water that you have, or two points for every finished green building you have, or things like that. It gives you some focus for end game scoring. And that's pretty much how you play Carpe Diem. All right, now this version of the game, I, in my opinion, is by far the best edition. I had the first edition of this game. This will be absolutely replacing that hands down. Uh, and this version fixes some of the earlier edition things that were going on. Uh, it was always really hard to tell like the regular tiles versus like the dark green tiles. Now they've made them white or black, very easy to see the difference. Also moving around and taking your actions was a lot more convoluted in the old version where now you just move side to side, makes it a lot more easy to see where you can go, planning out turns, seeing where your opponents can go. So they've really cleaned up this version a lot and by far it is the best version. Now this is a great feld in less than an hour. Uh, it is one of my favorite felds and possibly my favorite feld because of that. It's, it's not too, too long, but it has 
tons of great decisions. I love at the beginning of, the, of each round, you're planning your actions around based upon specific goals. And the goals, obviously, they change every game, and even the same goals, if they were oriented in different ways, would make you think differently. And I love at the beginning of the round, you're looking at what you have, you're looking at what goals are there, you're looking at your board already, and you're trying to plan out which tiles you think you wanna get this round to do whatever. Of course, your plans are gonna get thwarted, people are gonna take tiles you want, you're gonna need to change, but I like that you're doing a bunch of planning up front, and you're trying to follow that as closely as possible, but you'll still need to pivot quite often. This game has some longer term strategies to think about, but it's also probably even more very tactical. I like the player scaling in this game is great because you know when you're in a two player game and two of the tiles have taken out of one spot, the other two go away to simulate other players have taken those. And it really feels tight and equal no matter how many players you're playing with. And I love that about this game. The scoring selection is awesome. First of all, like I mentioned, it's pretty randomized at the beginning of the game, but deciding where you're gonna put that disc and which two things you're gonna go for. Because if you don't get one of those things, it's like minus four points for each one you can't get. And that's, that really hurts. So you're really trying to figure out where can you go and trying to be the first ones to be able to, to pick one of those is huge as well. I like that you can, there's different other aspects, nuances to this game, like the bread and using it in multiple ways. Like, hey, spend one to go to any of the tiles. Uh, and pick any of the tiles that you want that are there. Or three, if you get stuck having a place a disc somewhere where you can't fulfill one of those goals, you can spend three bread and not get the minus four points and without spending anything, that's really cool. Also using the coins as wild resources gives you another little thing to think about, a little bit more flexibility and openness to the game. But the game still does feel tight though, don't get me wrong, because of the goals and because of how much how many negative points you get if you don't score it. It still does feel tight, but there's some, there's definitely a lot of options for you. And those goals changing each game is gonna make it fresh. Also, you have all these bonuses around your board, uh, around the frame of the board that change every time you play, and that's gonna give you different th strategies. And so, so those are basically the long-term goals of the game. Uh, it's overall, this game is fantastic. This is probably one of my favorite, if not, not my favorite sort of gamer tile laying game. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I think it's my favorite Feld. I mean, it's down to this or Castles of Burgundy, but I think because of all the setup in Burgundy and that it's definitely a bit longer and it is an amazing game, but this one I feel is like, gives me 95% of the satisfaction Castle of Burgundy does in less time with less setup and less teaching. So I think this is probably my favorite Feld game for sure. And on the negative side of things, you know, a lot of Feld games, the theme, the theme is just barely there. It's not, it's barely here too. But also a lot of Feld games, you don't see a lot of great production, a lot of great graphic design and art and things like that. Now this one looks a lot better than the previous ones. Even the look and feel of the cards and the box and everything like that. But I'd say it's still not quite up to speed with where the market is going in general. Everyone's making games just look beautiful and gorgeous, just drawing you in. And sure, this game needed to be functional with the roofs and the way they looked and things like that, but they still could have changed things, made it look a little bit more appealing, made it look a little bit more to the standards of today. So it doesn't look amazing. It definitely looks a lot better than it did before, but it's still not quite up to where everyone else is in the industry, I think. So that's a negative on there, but for me, eh, it's okay. I'm gonna give that a pass because the game's just so amazing. So after I think about Carpe Diem, now I had an original version, but because I never reviewed it, we're gonna give this thing a saxophone serenade. That's the word I give when I keep a game and I very rarely keep them these days after I review them. So let's hit it. <laughs>